Okay, so we all know divorce can be complicated, splitting up finances, property, custody, but what about a couple's frozen embryos? As Delia Gonsalves reports, it's a complex moral dilemma. And it now has some legal guidelines, thanks to one divorce case in Maryland. He is all boy and completely wild. Six and a half year old Finley loves April Fools. In fact, he pulls pranks just about every day. He is the absolute joy of my life. Finley is an only child. Soon after Jocelyn and Joshua Pope got married in 2010, they decided to start a family. After struggling with fertility issues, the couple turned to interuterine inception, or IUI, and then in vitro fertilization, or IVF. I said, mommy prayed for a baby, and God said, wait, and I waited forever. After five years and seven rounds of treatments, the Popes had three viable pre-embryos. Those fertilized eggs that met the criteria to be successful were frozen. If we created life, we're going to go ahead and, and give them life. The first implant ended in a miscarriage, but the second produced their baby boy. Finn was born in 2016. Just shy of a year later, though, his parents split up. So Maryland has a marital property act that the courts use to divide up the personal property, but there was nothing addressing something that has the propensity for life. Until now. And how old now is Finn? Attorneys Deborah Cruz and Shannon Boiso are representing Jocelyn in her divorce proceedings that have made state history. Jocelyn, now 42, wants to implant that final preembryo. Attorneys for her estranged husband, Joshua, declined to be interviewed for this story, but according to court documents, he testified that he wanted that preembryo destroyed because of her health, the potential fetus's health, financial responsibility, and his lack of parental rights. The case first filed in 2019 was sent to the Maryland Court of Special Appeals, which created the first ever framework for judges. The six guidelines include balancing the interests of each party and whether they had a prior agreement. Even if it's a verbal agreement, yes. then that is yes. what we're dealing with here. Exactly. Um, now, that isn't always the case because some jurisdictions think, well, you know, if the contract was that the embryos be brought to term, and somebody's changed their mind, can we really force a person to become a genetic parent against their will? George Washington University law professor Sonia Souter focuses on the intersections of law, medicine, ethics, and emerging reproductive technologies. As long as embryos can stay frozen for a while and marriages can split up, you can expect to see these kinds of disputes. Souter says these difficult cases are made more complicated by the recent Supreme Court ruling overturning Roe v. Wade. They were thinking about abortion. I don't know that they were thinking about these scenarios. And so you could well imagine a state coming in and saying, uh, life matters above all else. And so we don't want to destroy embryos. Because of my infertility journey, it's out of my control, which is heartbreaking. In the meantime, the couple's five-day-old pre-embryo remains frozen and the divorce case continues, where a judge will ultimately decide between Joshua's desire and Jocelyn's dream. Delia Gonsalves, WUSA 9.